Now when we create a user account, we want to fetch this role and assign our user that particular role. So for that, we will stop the application and go back here. We will be working on the register page model. We will work on the post handler because here we will be receiving the request when the register button is clicked. We are creating a user here and once the result is successful, we want to assign the role that was selected to the user as well. So once the user has been created successfully, we can check the value of role. So we can have an if condition and on the input model, we have the role that will be populated because if we go to register, we are binding that to input.role. So we can extract that here and we can check if user.role is null. In that case, let's create a user with the default individual user role, which will be the end customer. So to assign a user role, we will have to await. We have the user manager. On there, we have a method add to role async. Make sure you use add to role and not add to roles. Roles is used for multiple roles that you want to assign to a user. We just want to assign one role. So in here first, we need to pass the user object and next is the role name. That is inside static details, we have the user individual. That is the lowest role that we have in our website, which is like an end user coming to our website and browsing our website. Then in the else part, if input.role is populated, we want to assign user manager dot add to role async. User object should be assigned the role that was selected. So we want to assign the role of input.role. So this looks great, but let's run the application and see this in action. Let me register as an admin user. We will select the role of admin and let's hit register. Great user has been created here, but let's go to database to validate everything. Let me refresh the table here and you see admin at .NET Mastery. One thing that will be different here is if you go to the right, all the properties are populated with the phone number, but you can see the discriminator is application user because the user type that we are creating now is application user. So that is working as expected. If we go to the ASP.NET roles table, we have the admin role and the ID of that role ends in 20A. Now the mapping table that maps the roles and the user is the ASP.NET user roles table. It will only have one entry. This is the new user that we just created and you can see the role ID is 20A. That means this user was assigned the role of admin successfully. So perfect, we can see how useful the helper methods are with user manager and role manager. Let me go back, log out, and let me try to register a user without selecting any role. So if we did not select any role and hit the register button, the default role of individual user should be assigned. Let's execute this. The new user got created with a role of 6A. Let's see the ASP.NET roles. The one ending in 6A is the individual role. So perfect, that is working as expected. Next, what I want to do is we have companies right here. So when we go on register and if we want to register a company account, I want to display in a drop down here the list of all the companies so that user can select that and click the register button. Let's do that in the next video. Now we need to add a new property to the ASP.NET users, which is a company ID. That company ID should only be populated if the role is company and nothing else. So let me stop the application and we will go to our models. Let's open up the application user. So inside models, application user, right here, we want to add a new property, which will be company ID. Now this company ID will be a nullable property 
because it is possible that a user does not have a company. Only the user with the role of company will be assigned a particular company. And since we are assigning company, it makes sense to add a foreign key with the mapping property of company. I will also add here validate never because we do not want any validation on the navigation property. So once we add this, we will have to add a migration because we are changing some things in the table. A new column of company ID will be created. So let's add a migration. And let me hit the command update database. Perfect, that looks good. If we go to our table again for ASP.NET users, and if we execute, oops, we need to do select star. This time we should see a company ID and that is null for all the accounts right now. Next, what we want to do is on the register page, we want to display in a drop down all the companies that are possible. So inside our register page model, we already have unit of work for company. So we just need to get unit of work using dependency injection. Perfect, that looks good. Let's go down where we have the on get handler. We will have to add another drop down which will be for company. So validate never. This will be company list. We will also need an integer to hold the company ID. So let's add that. And inside the on get handler, we will have to populate the company list. So this will be underscore unit of work dot company dot get all. And then we want to do the projection. So I can just copy the select that we have here, paste it one more time. What we want for the text is name of the company and value. We will keep the ID of the company, convert that to string because we want the company ID as an integer, which will be the ID because we have the company ID as the property. With that change, let's go to the register view and we can copy this, paste it one more time here. This time the ASP4 will be for the company ID and the ASP items will be company list. We will display select company here and let's run the application. Let's click on register here and perfect. We see both the companies are populated. Let's continue in the next video. I want to add some jQuery here so that the dropdown for company is only visible when company is selected in the roles dropdown. So while the application is running, we can go back to the register.cshdml and scroll down. Let's add some custom JavaScript. We'll say document.ready and we will create a function. Once the document is ready, we want to add a trigger on this dropdown. So if we press F12 here and inspect the element, we have the ID as input role. So let's add a trigger on input role. So we can say dollar hash input role. And on there, we have the change event. So whenever we change the dropdown here, we want to call this function. We will create a variable. I'll call the selection is equal to. We want to get the text of the current selection. So if we go to the input text here, whichever option is selected, that will have an option of selected. So in order to get that, I will paste the input row. On top of that, the option should be selected. If that is selected, then we want to get the text of that dropdown. Simple jQuery, nothing complex. Then we can check here if selection is not equal to, let's see the selection value, which is company. So if that is not equal to company, 
Then we want to toggle the next drop down that we have here. Let me get its ID input underscore company ID. So we want to say dollar hash input company ID. We want to hide it if the selection is not company, else we want to display that. So else we want to show that. Nothing complex, but this should work. Let's go back and refresh here. And if we select anything other than company, it's not visible. When we select company, that gets loaded. Perfect. Let me go to the top where we have the drop down. I will add style of display none by default. Let's refresh the page. And that is perfect. Only company displays the other drop down. Now, of course, you can spend more time on validations and making this fancy, but that is not my main focus. So let's continue from the next video. Now, next thing that we want to do is when we register a company user, user will select a company here. And at that point, we want to assign this company to the new user that is created. So if we go back and we will have to go to the page model, the company will be inside company ID. We want to assign that company ID only if the role is company. So when we are assigning the properties right here, we can check here if input dot role is equal equal to SD dot company. Only then we want to say user dot company ID is equal to input dot company ID. So that will assign the company ID inside the ASP.NET users table. But we need to make sure that role is also assigned. And then we are assigning the roles, so that is perfect. Let me restart the application and now register a company user. So let's register here. We will select company here and let me select Sparky. With that, let's hit the register button. That got created. Let me save this, go back to the database, and we will see the new user right here. If we go to the right, the company ID should be populated and perfect. So with that, all of our users are working as expected and we are able to register the user based on our requirement. So everything with identity is looking good. Let's continue in the next section.